You're with Julian on the Brown Note and a review of the one of the MVPs of modern cinema, Jordan Peele's latest film, Nope. Jordan Peele, um, in the movie sense, outside of his other work in the comedic sphere and everything, blew up with his first directorial film, Get Out. Uh, one of the most acclaimed films of the last decade, uh, where the... Um, it was the same actor, wasn't it? Daniel Kaluuya. The British actor. One of the best of his generation. Had a white girlfriend, went to go to the deep south to meet the family, and it all went to hell in a handbasket. It was one of the most acclaimed films and important films of the century, but I found it less so when I went back to it. Um, I found it more ordinary and less polemic and cutting the second time around, um, a few years later, a little bit in the vibe of the Stepford Wives. Um, his second film, Us, was very polarising, a really interesting story about a black underclass that lived underground and um, the middle class version of the black world on, uh, that live on the surface. And it, this, it's a very difficult story to explain, but basically they're... Um, it's it's sort of like an allegory of of slavery slavery and of um, you know the black underclass not doing so well as the the black middle class and the middle class forgetting them. Uh, and I thought it's a really powerful film. I thought the middle third of it went to hell a bit, but overall I've got probably more respect for that film now than I do Get Out. I think uh, ambition wise, it's just off the charts. It's just it's, it's incredible. And the, the first and last thirds I thought really really did work. And in between, he's done. I uh, he produced Black Klansman, which I thought was a really good Spike Lee film. But he produced and wrote Candyman, which got good reviews, and I thought was terrible. I thought it was awful. So he's returned with Nope, and the film itself has uh, caused a little bit of uh, downturn in his fortunes in the fact that they released it with no fanfare, no uh, campaign, no trailers, so people didn't know what they were getting into. Which um, gives off an air of weirdness about it, but I'm not sure that it was um, particularly successful compared to his other films so far. Might be when awards come around, it's got good reviews. Daniel Kaluuya is, is uh, for me, one of the great actors of his generation. Certainly one of the great British actors of his generation. He can do Get Out, or he can be that uh, absolutely horrifically evil yet completely cool villain in Widows. He can do absolutely anything. I personally don't understand why he's not been put forward as a substantial James Bond. He's got that X factor about him. Compared to uh, some of his contemporaries, he, he wipes the floor with them as, as far as an actor goes. Um, we get Kiki Palmer. So Daniel Kaluuya, we, like the, the, the opening 20 minutes of this film are by far the best because it has the otherworldly weirdness that i wanted from it um it's it's a really weird unknowable start which made me feel like i was going to get into something really really interesting it's sort of split between two worlds one of them has this very strange what appears to be sitcom going on and then uh, there's a chimpanzee on stage and it looks like murders are being committed and there's lots of really strange scary noise it's actually quite a scary unsettling opening and it looks like something really bad's happened and then you get uh, Daniel Kaluuya and his dad um, are ranchers in America uh, it looks like Montana I don't know exactly I can't remember where it was it looks like Montana and they're out in the ranch and suddenly you can hear these weird screams and things like coins start falling from the sky and one of them hits his dad and kills him um, which is, and it's all very, very strange. And they say that, you know, objects like keys fell out of a plane, coins and keys and stuff like that. We wind forward six months. Daniel Kaluuya's, um their job, apart from having this, you know, failing ranch, is they use their horses and their skill as um, wranglers on film sets. So they go onto film sets and they, you know, they're the ones looking after the horses. But None of this is going very well for Daniel Kaluuya. He used to rely on his dad a lot. His um, sister has now come on board, Kiki Palmer. She's very ebullient, almost abrasively ebullient. 
very into self-promotion and all of that, which is the opposite of a very withdrawn, almost manically depressed Daniel Kaluuya character. So he gets booted off the film set because the horse misbehaves and he's, you know, he's, he's not ready for it. He's still tra uh, traumatized by his dad's death. And we sort of retreat back to the farm. He's having to sell his horses to Stephen Ewan, who we find out was the kid playing on the sitcom where this chimpanzee went mental and killed the other cast members. So it was in front of a studio audience and he was a child actor. And this sitcom was going great guns, something gaudy, uh, Gordy's Home or something like that, based around a friendly chimpanzee. Um, and this chimpanzee loses it and ends up actually beating people to death on the set. And he's now a rancher himself, but he does a play ranch, which is like a ye, ye oldy worldy west town, which is nearby where Daniel Kaluuya's ranch is. And he's got the money to sort of buy the horses off of him to use in his, you know, ranching spectacles and doing, you know, ro uh, rodeo shows and stuff like that. But we realise that weird things are starting to happen and that the event that killed his dad was probably part of this. And it very much, I won't spoil any of it, uh, it leans towards there being UFO involved and, you know, these things happen at night in the night sky. And uh, the Kaluuya character and his sister go to like, Walmart or somewhere and get um, all this surveillance equipment to try and film it to sell it to um you know the, the tv networks showing definite proof of ufos and the rest of the film follows that path with the addition of uh is it michael wincott no brandon Pereira is one of the workers at this um, walmart thing helps them set up all the surveillance equipment and knows what they're doing so he becomes like the third member of their little clan and um things start getting more and more intense with this thing in the sky and particularly with the Stephen Ewan character's side of the story, things come to a head, and um, it basically becomes this life or death battle. And um, this is um, there are a lot of things wrong with this film. Things that aren't wrong with it: the beautiful cinematography of this sort of Montana sort of world. It's uh, it's stunningly shot. But um, I think often critic music, I think this, the parable of the Emperor's New Clothes is actually about music and movie critics because they either jump on each other's bandwagons or they, if they see something they don't understand, they've never got the courage to actually stand up and say it's not very good. They have to ascribe meaning to it. I've seen some off the charts reviews of this film. I've seen people saying about how clever and original it is because it shows that if we encountered something that was, you know, monumentally strange and otherworldly, we'd seek to put it on as a spectacle and make money out of it and how original. Have you seen the 1932 film King Kong? These ideas have been out there for decades. That's not original. But there are... The, the, the areas where the film really suffers most is... The main characters aren't written at all. Daniel Kaluuya is a brilliant actor. I have never seen him. He might as well have I am bored written on his forehead. He looks so bored. It's the flattest Daniel Kaluuya uh, performance I've ever seen. Kiki Palmer does the opposite, which is she tries to fill the space with as much energy as possible, and that became really grating for me. None of the main characters are good acting or good writing, and I think the, the latter is the reason for the former. I did find myself thinking that the bolted on side story, which has no impact and no reason for being there about the chimpanzee and the sitcom and the Stephen Ewing character, which occupies a small part of the film, is so much better than the film. His character's really well developed. That story with the chimpanzee and then his later life as this failing sort of showman. You just think, well, I want to switch over to that channel and watch this film. It's a very long, repetitive film that is continually having the same sort of, here's the thing at night in the night sky doing its thing. Some of the production design is good of the um, extraterrestrial or UFO, but some of it isn't. Like, there's a lot of, 
things that don't really make much sense and the scale keeps changing of it and when it does you know when things finally reveal itself it's half really really well designed but half of it is very very embarrassingly cheap looking they use the inflatable flailing arm tube guys you know the ones you see by car service stations and mortalized by the family guy in a really clever way but unfortunately they resemble the i don't know why he made that choice i don't know whether it was a commentary on what you're seeing from the the main ufo thing but it sort of made me think like yeah it looks a lot like a cheap infla flailing arm inflatable tube guy um it's it's really quite boring um it doesn't really have any meaning and um i thought it was like the opening sort of half hour made me think i was going to get into some really subversively weird disturbing you know jarring films i've seen some amazing supernatural films there was a couple of them these low budget films one was about one was the sequel to the first one i can't remember what it was called where they went back to a cult two brothers went back to a cult 10 years later and they could neither of them could remember why they left and they go to this place and it's informed by this sort of supernatural phenomena that's going on and it really leaves you sort of like god that's so strange what's happening here and that never happens here it becomes more and more pedestrian and ordinary there have been so many really like unbelievable low budget sci-fi films there was this other one where they were all sitting around a dinner table and they kept going outside to see what was happening and and they'd go across to see where this light was and they'd end up in the same dinner table and it was really sort of mind-bending and made great use of supernatural elements this becomes more and more ordinary as it progresses there isn't anything here to hang on to um it's it's it feels longer than the two hours and ten minutes it is um i just didn't i i, I really felt like it was a, a mess of a film like I said, you've got this quarter of the film, which is actually really good, which has no business being in the film as well. And then you've got Daniel Kaluuya staring into the distance for two hours, looking really bored. Um, and they just don't write any interesting characters and the, the it peters out. So I'm sorry, but this is a, by far Jordan Peele's least interesting film. Certainly pretty to look at. Very, very boring. Very underdeveloped and also overdeveloped in that it throws a lot of things in there that just don't need to be there and that don't really stick so i'm going to give note a four out of ten sadly